So um, I picked this film because I love this film. Uh, this was actually the first Malayalam film that I had ever seen um, that introduced me to Malayalam. So oh. now we've seen about 30, I would say, um, Malayalam films. Um, but it, it, everything about this film, I absolutely adore. Um, from the, just the, 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 the slow pace of it to the, the craziness that happens. It has one of my favorite actors ever in it, which is Fahad Vasil, who plays Shami. There's also another one, Subin, who plays um, the, the older brother, who I can't remember mm. his name right now. Baji? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, as well. Um, and it's it's just started my love for, for Malayalam cinema and the, the, these actors as well. And so anytime I can get people to watch one of my favorite films, I want to get their opinions on it. So uh, whoever wants to start it off, you can go right ahead. <laughs> I actually really enjoyed enjoyed this a lot it took me a little bit to i was saying to corbin before the chat where i texted him that um it's a different like emotional cadence than i'm used to mm -hmm. so i definitely had to sort of uh get into the groove <laughs> uh of the film and the rhythm of the film um and that took a little while but once i did uh, I really found a lot to enjoy. I thought it was a pretty beautiful film, just visually. Um, and some of the performances I really enjoyed, uh, mm. particularly, uh, uh, was it Sa Sanji? Saji? Saji, Subin Shah. The older brother. The older brother, I really enjoyed. Yeah. His performance um, and his character's arc, uh, to me, was sort of the most powerful one. Um, mm. The, the, uh, I like the the sort of idea of this like cross-generational family drama epic kind of thing um, with like a romantic backdrop. Um, but uh, I, I, for me, that was sort of, he was the through line that kind of carried me through. Um, I liked the Bobby baby romance as well, but um, that sort of rang a little sort of more similarly to you know your classic like american rom-com cinema so it was like easy for me to latch on to that um but just emotionally i found uh saji to be sort of the the center point of the film for me um they go like there's a lot that happens <laughs> uh over the course of you know two hours and 14 minutes as corbin was so uh kind of remind me when i said two and a half hours it's not um but uh so it's kind of like hard to it's it's unlike something i've ever experienced where there's like not a real time jump but then you're going through like the complete emotional sort of spectrum uh with like five different people um and then like the end turning into like a I don't know, like a, a, a like a psycho thriller, like was uh, a turn of events I did not expect. Um, but I mean, honestly, I I was pretty riveted all the way through. I was on board. Um, I I need more time to sort of like process my thoughts on a deeper level. But for me, yeah, uh, Saji was sort of the standout. His character and their arc um, were the ones that I sort of keyed into the most. Um, <laughs> But I liked uh, I liked Bobby. The, I, I'm not familiar with the actor's name, but the, the character, the actor that played Bobby, I liked his performance quite a bit as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's my general thoughts. Anyway, I'm sure cool, cool. more will pop up as we go on. Who's up next? <laughs> <laughs> Is TJ frozen again? It looks like they are. Oh no, they're not. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> just really good at staying still <laughs> his name was shane negum by the way the uh okay I can play bobby. bobby doug what do you think i really liked it i thought it was terrific um a lot of song breaks which i enjoyed you ain't um, seen you ain't if you think this has a lot of song breaks wait till i get to some other bollywood films <laughs> 
<laughs> you're gonna lose your mind. <laughs> Go on. I feel like there was like six in this movie. How many more can there be? Oh, oh I'm dude. talking like I'm talking like Two six to ten actual like... song and dance breaks in certain well, yeah, films. Yeah, like 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 RRR, like full yeah. on like dance yeah. break. Like this didn't have that. This had like very like yeah. narrative songs yeah. that were like pushing the story, which I I thought was like a nice way to like continue the story to almost like give you a little reprieve from movie watching and almost just like you can listen to a song that's going to tell you the same story. I thought it was interesting that there was one in English. One thing that really stood out to me that I really remember was, I don't know how prevalent it is in, in Indian cinema culturally to show someone meeting with like, what's like a grief counselor or like a therapist of some sort. I, but I thought that was like really powerful and really wonderful. I thought that that was the, for me, that was like the moment in the movie where like I started crying. I thought the acting was really beautiful. I thought it was really powerful. I thought he was ex ex exquisite performance in that, in, you know, throughout the movie, but especially in particular in that moment. Um, before the like bawling hysterics in the pink shirt guy, which I, I get the cut back to that. But before everything before that, I thought was like really, really beautiful. I see why he's one of your favorite actors. Um, I love the like the total suspense mustache man thriller section of the film. I thought it was like a great little just like, you know, rabbit out of the hat like you knew it was coming. But I don't know, maybe because I'm not used to watch. I think it's nice to like culturally I'm not used to Indian cinema. I don't. This is my second film from 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 India. I'm not used to the tropes. I'm not used to the pacing. I'm not used to anything, really. I'm still learning. So to me, it's like I'm kind of always waiting on the edge of my seat. Like ah, when he goes to the corner of the room, I'm like is he gonna like is he gonna like turn around with like a knife and like start stabbing everyone? Like what's going on? And then, <laughs> like I had no idea what to expect. I kept thinking like absolute worst case scenario because Triple R like they're slaughtering children in the streets. So I'm like, is everyone gonna die in this movie? Like what's gonna happen here? But. Yeah, I thought it was, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought that oh, the performances were great. I thought the relationships were really strong. I love the, like, the, the you know, family story of, like, this humble family of fishermen that, like, they don't have a father. How shameful that is for the older brother who feels in so many ways that, like, he is the father, especially like, age-wise, look-wise, and it's all obviously built into the film and, like, why they cast it the way they did. And it was written the way it was, but, like, I, I thought it was great. I thought it was wonderful. It was like a lot of really powerful moments. The scene when they go talk to the mom who's chosen the gospel path and like ask the mom if she'll come back. And the little, the, their youngest brother is like, what? Mom, it's just for a few days. And she just like yeah. takes his hand and she's like, I'll pray for all of you. Mm -hmm. and you see the ache in all of their eyes. And then like this sweet little bottle in their head, in the head. It's just like, you can see like, they're just trying so hard to just like maintain and just like, keep pushing and it's really beautiful and really touching i thought the i thought this movie i mean like again like triple r is my first indian film so like this is like a total 180 from that and i thought it was like really a joy to watch i thought it was great is yeah. i have a question for you corbin yeah is this style like stylistically sort of of a piece of like mainstream I'm gonna, I'm gonna murder the the pronunciation. You said Malay, Malayalam, 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 Malayalam. Yeah, yeah, Malayalam. Okay. Um, uh, so the Malayalam industry is is south, and it's from the state of Kerala, which is what you saw in this film. So the beautiful okay. ton of rivers everywhere. It's very tropical. It's beautiful. It's called God's Own Country. That's kind of the the name for it. Um. But Malayalam cinema kind of does its own thing when the rest of the country and the other industries do like, like RRR was the Telugu film. And so Telugu is known for big, uh, big action films and, and, and stuff like that, even though obviously every industry does everything. Bollywood obviously known for Bollywood, big Bollywood films and all that kind of stuff. Malayalam has kind of taken the reins of taking just story driven and acting driven stories mm -hmm. and uh, they, there's not really a trope in this the the thing that is really beautiful about this film is 
the main through line of this film is basically masculinity and toxic masculinity. Yeah. It, and it takes that on head on, <laughs> on mm. through every single male character in this. And even some of the female characters that perpetuate the, uh, the, the, the patriarchy essentially. Um, and so what you, what you see in this film, like the, the first time you meet Shami, which is the, the crazy one, right? He, 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 um, you see him Shaves in a mirror. The- he he has a massive mustache, which is a symbol of masculinity in a lot of uh, parts of India and has been for a long time. So he has a massive mustache, um, fine tuning it. And then when you see him, he, he goes on to the, uh, the mirror and he scrapes off a bindi, which is what females uh, wear on their head. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, it basically foreshadows the entire film of mm-hmm. he he's he wants to be in charge. He wants to the everybody to pay attention to him he thinks he's the main character of this film but not in a good way like we talk about it here uh like he calls himself a hero at the end yeah like when he keeps screaming yeah shami's the hero shami's the hero which is for indian cinema your big action stars they're called the heroes even if it's not like a like a superhero film Mm -hmm. they're called the heroes and so that he he's always wanted to take on the bad guys which is why you see this ridiculous smile on his face at the end he's having he's a taking, blast fight yeah he's though, just yeah. <laughs> he's waited his entire life for this moment uh to come and then obviously throughout the all the other characters as well of obviously um um uh, bobby and his his pride uh in in thinking that you know he's the man of the house um the sh- uh, the the um, Sorry, the elder brother. I always forget his name. Um, Subin, that that character. Uh, he's now having to take the reins okay. because he's the eldest of the family, and eldest is supposed to kind of take the reins of the family uh, on, and he's kind of just not doing that at all. Um, and uh, and then it also takes on the element through the the female perspective the one of his wife kind of enabling him and just because she's scared of this man and the his mother-in-law as well who often the those matriarchals of the family perpetuate the patriarch system um in in the name of just you know what what others will think and so that's one of my favorite parts about this film is just how it takes on masculinity which is a big touchy subject in india because there's there's a lot of toxic masculinity going on uh with with some men in certain parts of uh india uh and because they've idolized these certain heroes and so they you know think a certain way and so that's 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 why but yeah there's no trope specifically which makes that scene with the therapist all the more sweet and that is that is a big deal like reverse the like op, like the the A shot to the B shot of that of like then cutting back to Bobby and his the his soon to be bride and they're laying also crying top of the fishing net and then like he starts to cry and it's really sweet and endearing like the cut back between those two is really nice mm-hmm. yeah um so you look pretty TJ. <laughs> <laughs> um the three oldest brothers have all the same dad right and then everyone but bonnie has the same mom and then the youngest and bonnie have completely different parents altogether is that Mm, right it's just two separate i think uh saji the eldest is the only one that had the different mom uh mom and then when but they, i thought the, that i thought that when, yeah. sorry i thought that was saying that even though the youngest and bonnie have different parents they have a really strong bond wasn't he saying that to that him? was mentioned that definitely was mentioned but i believe that saji had the one dad did they share dad or mom i just know that uh once the two eldest got together then the uh two after that frankie and um i'm not sure Bobby. honestly okay. um i yeah. thought in the very beginning 
that this was going to be like a Indian bandit like Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> the soccer, soccer intro. Well, he's like, I thought he was like at soccer academy or something. And then mm -hmm. yeah, and then like one of the first things that happens when he goes home is that like him and all his friends play soccer together. And then I like, almost did think I was watching the wrong movie because of how and it then I started for some friend. reason. Yeah. yeah, I thought that like yeah. the guy with the mustache was going to be like the guy that's like, you can't play soccer in this town. And they were going to be like, no, we'll play soccer, <laughs> we'll play soccer forever. <laughs> oh, man. It's like um, loose, but for soccer. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, I, uh, I love this movie a lot. I love how they pretty much established the relationship of all the brothers from the get go. Um, I saw my brother and I with Frankie and the, forgot his name, the one that was off with the dancers and was mute. Bonnie. Bonnie, yeah, I saw my younger brother and I in that relationship a lot because I saw it like with me like going away from LA and then coming back and us still having like a great relationship. So I feel like every dynamic was done really well. Like there was no like copycats or anything. I have my notes as always and I have, <laughs> Shami looks like, Indian Elijah Wood with a mustache <laughs> <laughs> and I just I just couldn't unsee that and no disrespect to him at all because but uh, I saw that I love the comedy I laughed a lot more than I thought like there was this line that Bobby shared when uh when baby was staring at him when she was giving the tour and he said she's fallen for me and clearly obviously he's fallen for her too but just the delivery in that line was hilarious um Every time uh, uh, Shami was on screen, I was pretty much tense. I didn't know when he was going to pop or explode. I just did not trust him at all. It, the, just the acting was done really, really well and just how slowly he would react. You would never expect how he'd react. And then the smile would pop from time to time. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm scared. I'm, <laughs> I'm terrified. But um, the whole uh, exchange when, when they're doing the dishes and he pops his head in, wanting to know and what they were crying, talking about. And he's crying. Yeah, that was the <laughs> funniest part. It was hilarious and scary. And I was just like, can they cut to another scene? Because he's not going to stop. <laughs> I was going to mention that scene. It was so yeah. funny how long yeah. that back and forth went on. Yeah. Part. Like, what are you, like, you can about? tell me. Like, it's you can tell me. Just tell me. And she's like, it's private. What it, I found that goodness. legitimately it's frightening. Like, yeah. if if you have a different soundtrack under that scene, it's like so <laughs> fucking menacing, you know? Yeah. Like, and they did like, a good dad kind of, they did get a good job holding back and letting him do the acting. It wasn't until like the very end where you, then you heard the tense music. And you were yeah. like, yeah. This well, is there was expecting. actually, the, the, there was music behind a lot of it, like at the barbershop scene. Uh, and they had kind of mm -hmm. lower tense music behind earlier scenes. So you can get yeah. kind of built, but yeah. obviously no, nothing like the, like the end barbershop scene was really really good too and obviously i was like terrified there as well with the <laughs> just how slowly it was gonna be <laughs> i thought he was gonna like do something like give him a bad haircut or something but um i guess i didn't i i kind of had a hard time buying him as like an existential threat but <laughs> i like I, I don't know I'm, until you maybe, saw how you could throw hands right I, well yeah i'm like there's these three dudes are like burly like work in the river and then this guy is like a barber and like they would just they would wreck him in a second yeah it's so uh, he's doing it, all these combos like it, it, it's more about the uh the, the class crazy. issue class issue uh, yeah because um, yeah. obviously where they live and and uh, for whatever reason uh fishing is considered low like bobby said be beneath him he thought it was almost beneath him yeah to, to do and so i think it was that that kind of fed into that but yeah he's for not sure. like the, he, he's not like uh he's not like um physically say, imposing was, yeah it's like a little rock or anything like that right yeah. i was gonna say an I indian think, actor um, but you guys wouldn't know that Another scene that stood out for me, aside from the therapist scene, was the one where um, where Shami is taking the seat at the head of the table, and it does that shot pulling away, and he just has his slow smile, of course, and like, like pretty much like he's won, you know, mm -hmm. just how like cleverly he just makes that happen, and the, just the shot of that was pretty much perfect on my part. Just just like done really, really well. 
took me a minute to realize like that that's what was happening there mm-hmm. yep. i was like what is this music like what is this like <laughs> breakfast scene so serious for and then like yeah. took me a second to realize that at that's the head like, of the table what was going on like, i was so confused this, for this was actually this director's debut film i couldn't tell this is his directorial debut yeah. wow I gathered that from some letterbox reviews I was like reading after I, I finished it or whatever. That's oh, pretty nice. crazy. Yeah, that's like, super impressive. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It actually happens more than you'd think in Indian cinema. Just hmm. uh, like random, like people that don't have any credits can just direct a film with stars in it. Home it's, run. It happens yeah. o- like often. And I, I don't know why it can't happen here like that uh, yeah i do have a question what did what did i mean that's probably an obvious answer but what did sabi gift um uh bobby at the end when him and baby were in the bed like he gave him a little condom condom. it was a condom okay (laughs) i was like i i just couldn't put two and two together i was like okay that's what it is that's very nice nice. that actually reminds me tell them classic sabi move (laughs) Oh, when when he throws the thing on the ground. Maybe. Oh yeah. The part where the oldest brother mm-hmm. says to the two brothers, the one with the American girl and then the one with baby, and he says, like, you know, you guys should move out now that you have these women that you're with. And then Bonnie is like, oh yeah, okay. And then he like pull something off of his shirt or something it's a pube yeah yeah he he essentially grabs something out of his pants and says go fuck yourself essentially or something i didn't know what what he gave him because i I, yeah so i was like i didn't i don't know if it was a pube specifically i thought he was just like go fuck yourself like here's my dick or whatever i I don't know what it was specifically did you see a pube there emmett I thought he like plucked a pube from <laughs> under his pants and was like, "Yeah, here you go, buddy." Like, <laughs> yeah, it's very funny. <laughs> Soraya, okay. classic Bonnie move. <laughs> what what do you think, Soraya? Um, I really like what Emmett started us off with by saying that it was an emotional cadence that was unfamiliar to me because that's exactly how I felt. What do you mean by that? By the way, like. I just think that the tone wasn't something that I was um, that I'm completely accustomed to because I was really unfamiliar going in, and I think mm-hmm. maybe the same way. Same. Yeah. I, and I think in addition to there were just a lot of um, <clears throat> or not a lot, but there were just a few things that like because the, there's obvi- obviously cultural differences. Like it took me a second to get acclimated to not being steeped in U.S. traditions and customs, which is obviously I always enjoy it and appreciate it, but it always takes me a second to like figure out what's going on with that. Um, But yeah, also like Emily and Will, I was like, wait, did I click on the right thing? I was like so confused starting with the boys playing soccer and like being in like (laughs) the- It's a little confusing. But um, it was, I was pleasantly surprised by it. I mean, I did think that it may like, okay, I, I like romance stuff. Like I'm, pretty corny about it which is why I don't like letting myself watch it because I like to not feel those things personally but um, some of I I think there was like just a little bit of it and I can't really quantify it anymore so maybe I'm just wrong but I was like is this corny or should I just let myself enjoy it right now because it's sweet and it's cute I think it's both (laughs) yeah probably a little bit of both but like nothing wrong with that um I also thought that just the like when I the play the the setting the location the place they're in that part of India is beautiful Mm -hmm. holy crap it's gorgeous over there Mm -hmm. um but yeah I thought I thought the story was really cool I I love like a family a family story a family odyssey um I thought the dynamics between the different brothers they were all performed well and they made a lot of sense to me um and Shami of course scene stealer uh, and I did also read that I think his production company helped produce the movie, which is cool that he helped to get the whole thing made. 
Um, I did think at the end him having everybody held hostage was like a little out of left field, but the further I get away from it, the more I can kind of, I guess, justify it because he really did seem like he was like one little thing away from blowing up, especially the corner thing. The corner yeah, thing was, was it was true. scary, but it was also really funny. I was like, like yep. him just standing in that corner, it was a total Blair Witch moment, but also like if anybody I knew did it, I'd be like, What the hell are you doing? I like yep. how like when they call his brother or his friend or whatever, he's like, Yeah, he don't he'll do that. And then yeah, when exactly. they come back out, <laughs> when they come back out, he's like oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shami, <laughs> Shami was basically making me like cackle, like laugh out loud. Same. Yeah. He was good. Really, thought, really good. I thought, I thought in, really that, that kind of that kind of leads into my feeling about the movie in general is that I I enjoyed the movie, um, but I'm not quite sure if I enjoyed it for the. the purposes intended by those who made the film that's not something i can know for a fact um but it's just something that i i feel probably um i also think a lot of it unfortunately was lost in translation there would be like scenes that like the mo to me the probably one of the most genuine scenes in the movie one of the most important scenes in the movie is when Saji is talking to his friend who like five minutes later dies I don't know that BJ yeah um mm. that was like it felt like a really important scene but the subtitles were fucking all over the place yeah the subtitles were not it wasn't it, it's not the movie's fault whoever no, not at all yeah whoever did the translations kind of fumbled it a little bit but i know it's really hard to do so i can't be mad especially when you're like talking about ideas that are sort of it's it's yeah. like a little more ethereal and cultural yeah. as opposed to just like simply um, translating the words yeah. right. it was like it was trans a lot of it was translated yeah. especially in the more like like emma just said like the more serious conversations that were like not just like and where are you going today? Oh, I'm going there. I'm going like, to La Biblioteca. Yeah. <laughs> like, a lot of those conversations, I think they didn't, like, they just translated it, like, word for word very literally. So, like, a lot of it was just kind of, like, you were, like, it's, like, hard when yeah. in your mind, you're, like, nobody not, talks and, like and that. So not, it's, like, you have to kind of, like, rework it in your mind. And sort then, of, like, read it and then, like, read it again in, like, you know, like an actual cadence that someone would And then speak. not only not only does that affect you in that moment when you're actually reading it, but because it's funny, it's yeah. inherently funny to read like, you know, like what is obviously not happening to read that, it like disrupts, I think, the the um emotional lens through which I'm watching the movie. Especially because they translate song lyrics too and like never ever ever do song lyrics translate well no and it like, happened they in, rhyme in, in their language or whatever it happened but they in don't perfect, at all it happened in perfect, in perfect blue, blue. Yeah. but in, in like this movie for example like they would play a song over like a sad or sweet moment but then they would translate the song onto the screen so you're just like oh that's actually so funny that like yeah that translation... i think just as a as a rule probably unless it's a musical it, it probably the song doesn't need to be translated yeah. i don't think actually often in indian cinema they do because they're they're usually and i i do most of the time subs unfortunately are pretty bad uh, which is unfortunate, but uh, oftentimes if there's music or a song, it has to do with something uh, or or a feeling that they're trying to get across to you in the lyrics as well. I uh, think just, just because I, his songs are so important to Indians and in films. I could see I could see what you're the two of you are saying, Emily and Will, but I, I kind of I kind of disagree. I thought that the the translation like. Thanks, Maybe I, I wasn't looking to sort of digest it literally, I guess. Like, I kind of, I didn't know that about Indian cinema, Corbin, but it makes sense. Like, I kind of keyed into it through the process of watching it happen because I was like, oh, they're very clearly like, it's not like American cinema where 
there's like a needle drop necessarily. And like, if you pick a needle drop that's too on the nose, it's like, oh, that's on the nose. And I was like, okay, no, this is part of the storytelling, like the format, I guess, yeah. as opposed to, but I understand why it would be funny to like see what is essentially sort of miss yeah. like grammatically incorrect English all over the screen. Yeah, whatever, unfor- so. Unfortunately, it happens more than I'd like uh, the, the, the bad translations uh in indian cinema and it's hard to especially a, a language that's so fast and mm. uh deeply meaningful uh, and there's a lot of stuff that w- we'll never be able to understand because yeah. the way they're saying it in the language they can't translate it in english it yeah. just can't maybe be. it's because it i grew up watching be. maybe it's because i grew up watching bad subs of like Dragon Ball Z and Japanese anime. Yeah. It's like all the dialogue is just fucking nonsense. Or I was like, all right, yeah, sure. I'll just <laughs> I'll go with this. Yeah. There were times in the movie where it felt like the character was just going like, hmm? and then it would say something in the subtitle. Yeah. And I was like, they didn't say anything. What? They, just oh, sound. they speak I so kind of fast. Like, this, feels very, this feels very Jewish now. <laughs> T- um, TJ, TJ, what do you think, man? Hold on. I'm not done. Oh, sorry. Shut um, up, TJ. So I think, I think when reflecting on this movie and like, I think that it actually works better for me almost when I take out a lot of the minutia, what I would call minutia at least for me and, and like think of it almost as a rom-com, except that, and this may be a cultural thing. And so I wanted to ask you Corbin, because I was talking about it with Soraya that like the relationship, especially in the beginning between baby and Bobby, Mm -hmm. which is great that the two of them are together because I like saying those names next to each other. (laughs) Um, Like he is kind of such a fucking doucher to her. And then she's like really desperate to get with him still. Um, And that and that kind of left me um, wondering what was, it doesn't necessarily have to be communicating anything, but if mm-hmm. there, there is something that's supposed to be felt in that moment, like we as an audience, are we supposed to be empathizing with him that like he's done something wrong? No, or- and, and it is a little bit, it is, it is a little cultural uh, there, um, but uh, and I guess it's it's not strictly Indian. Obviously, the American cinema has had, you know, people that shouldn't be with this guy because he's a douche, but they're with them anyway. Um, but yeah, uh, essentially, the ride you took with Bobby was essentially he was a slacker ass who thought, you know, he was the man, so he should be doing everything. Uh, and that's basically his arc. And so, no, at those times when he was being an ass and was being misogynistic and all that kind of stuff, you were supposed to be thinking that about him. Okay. Uh, 100%. He's supposed to read as, like, very, very insecure. Yeah. Like, he thinks that he's not good enough for her, so he kind of, like, takes it out on her a little bit. Like, why don't you go, you know, like, like, yeah, he's very he's very unhappy with his situation, his house. Yeah. He thinks his family comes from fishers, which once again he thinks is like beneath him. Um, really when at he's that, at work and sorry, I'm I'm so I'm sorry. Keep going. I'm the worst. <laughs> keep going. Uh, I I really like when he's at work and he's like, I hate this job, and then the guy's like, just listen to your music. It'll be fun. <laughs> And then he listens that to was a great like, moment. This is great. And then his ear had his earbud falls on. He's like, nah, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> I related to that so hard for some reason. <laughs> that, that's how I quit all my jobs in the past. Actually. It just like when okay. your earbud falls out and you realize the situation you're in, and then <laughs> oh yeah, this place fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah, I got to start over this track. Come on. I just really liked how he was like, okay, yeah, I could, I can do this. Like, I'll get into it. And then as soon as his earbud falls out, he's like, nah. <laughs> I think that's kind of the type, like that's kind of the type of thing I was, um, I was wondering about is like, is that supposed to be a joke? What? Sorry. That the like earbud falling out and then uh, being oh, like, oh yeah, that whole sequence was supposed to be kind of funny. Yeah, for sure. Okay. okay. Also, yeah. is this is this a real thing that like everyone has their little Bluetooth speaker that they carry around with them all the time, <laughs> or is that just like 
I couldn't tell if it was a water bottle or a. Wait, I it, thought it was product placement. It might be. It might be product placement, and it might be uh, stuff like that. But uh, it, even at one point, when the American girl comes to stay with them, first of all, this was really funny when she asks for a, a, a pillow. Pillowcase. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, you know, like a pillow cover, and then like when she does this and says pillow cover, and then the young kids like, oh, like he's like, oh, I know what that is. Oh, that reminds me. And of then that. she goes, sorry. And then no, she. Go ahead. And then she goes. And then I'll go ahead. <laughs> and then she goes. It's just like really because I I was like at first I thought because he catches a fish in the beginning and then he the first time I see anyone carrying the speaker around is like right after he catches a fish and he brings it to the bar and I was like oh, is he gonna give like did he put the fish in there is he gonna like give him that fish and then I realized it was a speaker and then I was like what is this thing with the speaker and then the American girl goes uh. Can I? Do you have a Bluetooth? I can connect my phone and we can listen to music. And I was like, "What is the deal with Bluetooth speakers in this movie?" Because like, whoever has said like, "Hey, you guys have a Bluetooth?" That was a very specific oh. request. I mean, well, yeah, I know. No, was like, yeah. "I forgot my headphones. Can I connect to the Bluetooth so we can all listen to music?" Well, they, they are from makes sense because no one has TVs. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they don't have like TVs. They don't have well, no, no, people do have TVs, but they didn't I specifically. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They didn't specifically have a TV or a sound bar or, or and iPhones are uh, unattainable almost in India. They are so expensive in India. Like oh, yeah. they are like double like the price in India that they are here. So almost everybody has an Android uh, in, in India. Um, so hmm. hold on. Did, did my audio just cut out? No. Mm -hmm. We still hear you. Okay. Anyways. Um, yeah. So yeah, I don't. I, I don't think it's like a cultural thing. I just think he, this, <laughs> this guy, had the speaker, and he liked it, was, it a lot. It was just really funny, like the the heavy prevalence of Bluetooth. Yeah, <laughs> for yeah, sure. My brain immediately was like, this has to be product placement because they always like gave the speaker its own almost hero shot in all the scenes that it was featured <laughs> in, like to show the lights changing and stuff too. But yeah, it was a little. I like scary, the effect. Not the worst. And then the last thing, and then and then TJ can go, um, unless I change my mind and want to say another thing. I might but, also say a few more things before you go. Anyone else who wants to speak before TJ, please, <laughs> nice. for the love of God, speak up. Um, uh, something I really, really loved, and it it translated um, more than more than any other time, especially when they were on the water because there were lots of different color boats and like the metal pipings and things on boats and then the trees, just like the, the, the colors and the saturation of the colors of, in this movie mm -hmm. was probably my favorite aspect of it. It reminded mm -hmm. a lot of uh, the director Vim Vendors. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, yeah, that it was really more in the second half of the movie, I think, that that I really noticed it. But yeah, that I I wanted to mention because I really appreciated that a lot. Yeah, especially the intro, that like the actual credits part. Like oh, I wanted to say too that I was bummed that I wasn't thanked in the opening credits because I think <laughs> yeah, me too. I think that most people in the world were thanked. It seemed so. I was bummed that my name wasn't said. That's uh, funny. <laughs> They caught you on the back end. Well, yeah. <laughs> if you stuck around, it was like a post credits thing. <laughs> TJ, TJ, what'd you think, man? Hi. Hi. Um, Hi, how are you? So, obviously finished it right before, so I'm, I'm, I'm really still trying to figure out exactly how I felt about it in the same way that, uh, um, I don't know what I'm saying. Anyways, so I'll just start going through it. Um, but the first things I noticed that I really liked uh, was that the cinematography in this movie I thought was really great. Their choices of shots were really good. And the songs were really pretty, especially that first song, that first ombre. That mm -hmm. song was a good song. Um, I enjoyed how they tried to show the differences between the two older brothers by the way they drink whiskey. Um, <laughs> in fact, Mercedes uh, asked me, like, who drinks a drink like that? And I'm like, I've some people water their whiskey down with water. 
because they can't handle the bite of it or whatever. So it's, it, it is a thing. I swear it's a thing. Um, and I thought that was a good way to show that. Um, I thought that the acting was super solid. I didn't feel like anyone, I, I did feel like in some ways there was like a different that, um, what, sorry, what's the, the antagonist's name again? Shami. Yeah, Shami was like almost in a different movie sometimes. <laughs> um, I feel like he's being a little more campy and like really over the top, which was like fun and funny, but everyone was kind of playing a little more grounded. So I thought they they were kind of in two different movies sometimes. Um, I did, it did take me a while to like fully know what was happening. Um, just because like it started off with the kid and then the kid kind of disappeared. And I'm like, I thought that kid was like in, in the main character the, or the integral part of the story. Now he's kind of just gone. Um, and <coughs> I was trying to figure out like what the main tension was or and I'm like, okay, maybe they're just surely like a love story. But I don't think the first like sign of love happens until like the montage between Bobby and baby. Right. And that happens like, past 30 minutes into the movie I think so it's just a lot of like me trying to the story structure is just super not like American cinema I think maybe it's nope. a, a, something that's structurally different and that's probably the hardest thing for me to grasp onto because I'm just like I'm trying to find out like where I'm following um because I'm a little lost still um it's almost like it takes like we're in American cinema it would take like at the 40 to 45 minute mark is when stuff kind of like, oh, here comes like the extra little twist. Um, and I feel like it takes like till the hour point in Indian cinema almost. Like it almost takes just a little. Longer. It's because their films are longer. Well, true, <laughs> true. But I mean, some of the longer films it would happen in American cinema, even at 40, 45 minute mark. But um, then. Uh, I did really like the like the feminist take on this movie till a point. I have I have a something on that that kind of was like, uh, but um, I did appreciate the fact that it was talking about like the toxic masculinity. I did not catch the thing with him scraping. I didn't um, think any of you would. Near that, I wish I caught that earlier. Oh, you knew what it was. Yeah, I did. Oh, no, hell yeah, good for you. Oh, that's a I lie. Oh, that's a lie. She asked me what it was. <laughs> I answered. I have a ring. <laughs> Called out. <laughs> Uh-oh. First of all, I did know. And second of all, we watched it in that's the That's true. We watched in it in the bedroom, the bedroom and so. there's no ring camera in the bedroom. I would mm. hope not. In the guest bedroom, there's a ring. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed. Well, good to know about the guest bedroom. <laughs> to know ring camera in the bedroom. Let's go on, PJ. Just a tripod and a VHS. Even <laughs> better. Um, anyways, uh, so I, I do appreciate like that that kind of take on the film, and I like again, it does set things up like me really clearly. Like when he's in the mirror and he's like talking very vainly about himself. I'm like, okay, this guy obviously kind of is full of himself, but I'm not sure yet if it's gonna be in more kind of like a comedic way mm -hmm. or like a more like serious, this guy sucks way. And as soon as the whole, like the ball got kicked into his yard the first time, I'm like, all right. And I know he's just pretty terrible and he sucks. Um, so that was all great. I especially, I, I do appreciate um, it was funny, like the character I related to the most was like the American girl when he starts yelling at her and she's like, stop yelling at me. <laughs> she's like, why are you yelling at me? You can chill. And I'm like, I'm like, go off. I'm like, this is like all my friends. They would be having this same reaction right now. Um, and I just like, really appreciated that. Um, so um, that made me happy. I, I do um, feel like it, it kind of got like, so then it, there's the end, right? With the whole thriller thing, um, which was kind of like fun and an unexpected thing. But I was like, what? what yeah. Movie right now. Where'd this come from? This tone is crazy. Um, but, uh, and it was super symbolic with like the fishnet throwing over him. I thought that was like a very symbolic gesture to tie it all together. Um, and I also appreciate like the talk about classism as well. 
That being said, at the end, it still is like men saving women from other men, um, which I guess you can kind of put a good light in. Like maybe it's part of men's responsibility to be good, to fight back against the shit men. That's the best way you could sell it to me. But it's just like, again, well, the, men being the, the women were tied up. Women scenario, it kind of falls a little like eh, on me a bit. Um, they couldn't do much. They were tied up. I, well, I know, I know. That's, that's how it was written. I'm not talking about the situation. I'm talking about how it was written. She definitely like stood up for herself, though. She yeah, like, broke the bugs no, out. No, she, she did absolutely, and that's which why, literally yeah, put him in a corner. Right. Yes. I, I appreciated babies. I appreciate all of babies' um, defiant remarks. The whole she was cool. She was so cool. Really great. Um, but also, I'm like, damn, he really like beat them like terribly like what it what, yeah. what what did this dude think was gonna happen like would the police have not investigated this or been like Neh. like I mean, not what are they when they throw well, the t-shirt at his face and then he kind of gets can. and then they run in the bathroom and turn it and lock it and he has the razor blade in his hand and he's like oh man and he throws it on the <laughs> ground it's like yeah wait that was your weapon like, what? i'm done with <laughs> this weapon it was so funny. It was like it would reveal. He's like, "Oh, I remember him using this," and he like changed his mind. <laughs> yeah, but um, so overall, like again, it's hard for me to figure out how I feel because, um, it's still me getting used to like. This is like the third Indian film that you've told me to watch, Corbin. But technically, I maybe the fourth or fifth I've seen, and I feel like the hardest. I, I've seen two before, so I don't remember which ones, but I'm, I'll I'll think after this. Okay. But um, it's uh, it's just like the tone thing that I'm trying to like figure out. Um, because even then, within the three Indian movies you show me, as much as they all have a different tone from American cinema, all those three movies have very different tones. So like, I think it's just like me getting used to it and trying to figure out like, I is the I can't tell sometimes, like I think uh, Will said this, like if something's supposed to be funny or not. Um, and that's when I'm still like learning. I'm like, it's, I can't tell. You know what well, I mean? I supposed to be if, if you're laughing, it's supposed to be funny. Well, cause at the end, I'm like, this is a really serious moment, but like, I can't help with this dramatic music and he has the fishnet over his head and they're like being pulled out. I'm like, obviously, this isn't supposed to be funny. Like they're beaten. Like you know what I mean. Like so, I know this isn't funny, but the tone issues here the is part, like setting the, the, up the fight like, scene. I don't know. Had comedic humor to it. It did. Okay. Well, it's and hard. It was, it was I don't think I should be laughing when they're like pulling woman out from under a bed, like tied up and beaten. Oh, not that part. No. Well, that's but, what I'm uh, saying. But it's tied in with that. You know what I mean? They're so close to each other. Uh, I'm like, ah, it's very, uh, it felt very confused emotionally. And I also want to add in, if you guys don't mind, at least from my perspective, if not yours, but um, I'm not muted, right? But everyone keeps saying different from American cinema, but I, I actually find that Indian cinema, we've only seen from three different regions now, but Indian cinema seems to be different from all other countries that I've seen, not just America. So I, I just wanted to, to say that because I think that I could draw a lot of parallels between America, Japan, France, Korea, wherever that I can't necessarily um, with Telugu and Malayalam and 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 uh, where where was uh... Hindi Hindi that was the Hindi industry Bollywood ugly was ugly Bollywood. okay okay yeah uh, well it, it also I mean it also has to do with them um, those are three films that just I I really enjoyed and so there there each industry you there are certain films that you can watch from those industry that, that feels like those certain industries once you get started to get to know each one of them but they are all very different from each other. Uh, and also Indian cinema in general, it doesn't, uh, we, and we had to learn this through the 300 plus films that we've seen, is it, it doesn't follow the typical start climax ending. It, it, sometimes there's no point at all to what you're watching and that it's just, it's part of the progression of the story. 
and, and and that's it. It's 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 they take their time, especially Malayalam. They're like this film, somebody has coined a phrase called Malayalam Malayali chill or something like that. So it's just a very laid back film for most of part of the film, obviously. Uh, if you were wrong, they'll tell us in the comments. Yeah, oh, they, they will. <laughs> <laughs> and there's probably a bunch of stuff that I was wrong about. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so you, you'll get those tonal differences. And when I when I saw it, because it's probably the third time I've seen this film, I was wondering, I was like, how, how much of the cultural stuff are you guys going to be able to get? Because by the time we, this is the first Molly Allen film we'd saw, but we were probably almost a hundred films in by the time we had seen this film for right. Indian for Indian cinema. So we we got the whole matriarchal patriarchal systems of families. Like, why is this brother in law have any say in this in in this girl's life? Why like why why does he get to decide who she gets to marry? Why does the mom why is she, why is she the way she is? The sister. Uh, all, all that kind of stuff. And so like, um, by the time we got to it, we were obviously a little more up to date. And so I didn't know how you guys were going to react to something that is actually of the two you've seen, probably the most deeply cultural one that you've mm -hmm. seen so I far. Kind of, I kind of felt like I, I picked up the broad strokes at least, you know, yeah. like pretty quickly. It's it went into the film knowing, like, okay, there's probably gonna be a large that uh, maybe won't click with me or won't hit me the way that it intended to won't know what it's referencing or like how sort of the storytelling work compared to yeah. you know the cinema that I'm used to and I can't uh, hear him. Uh, yeah, is okay. Emmett are you cutting out is Emmett coming cutting out for yeah, everybody? Yeah Emmett's cutting out Sorry, Emmett. Am I still cutting out? Yeah, no. Sorry. No. Okay. What, what, what was the last thing you heard? Me talking about Gizmo? Yeah, I think you're talking to Lauren at that point, for me at least. Oh, okay. Something about, you said something about like America being superior to all of it. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, <laughs> uh, I feel like I don't even anything else after that. um no i just i kind of gathered the broad strokes I, I i sort of expected not to understand a certain percentage of of maybe some of the subject matter or sort of the storytelling devices yeah. or anything like that. um but uh i guess the the only thing that i didn't understand at least initially um was sort of what I'd mentioned before, and it seems to be a reoccurring thing for Gizmo. Stop. Uh, uh, here um, is the like there the tonal shifts. I'm I'm kind of like cool with. I was like after a certain point, I was like okay, like I'm on the ride. Yeah. Like I'll 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 go with whatever it's throwing at me. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that I had the biggest uh, sort of like hurdle over was the speed at which it communicates emotional connections <laughs> and that the like montage i understand the montage like just as a, a device to communicate sort of time and experience in a short amount of like a short amount of of real time but mm -hmm. the, the the and they did use that but it was like the uh the intensity of emotion and like the expected emo like the expected the expectations of behavior between the people involved whether it was like bobby and baby or some of the brothers or mm -hmm. uh, uh uh shami and uh his wife, his wife. And, and baby or whatever um that was like the biggest adjustment for me where i was like okay, I, it's almost like they skipped like a, what would be like a 30 minute segment in a film that I'm used to that's mm. like developing the relationship. And mm. I sort of had to, like the relationships between the brothers are super strong. The dynamic with Shami and that family are, are, is set up pretty well. And then everything between them is like, yeah, we'll throw them on top, like, 
it's like that and you you have to just kind of buy into whatever that dynamic might be i don't know if i'm making any sense but it just it felt like there was a a bit of like leapfrogging over step and that took me a minute to sort of adjust oh no interesting <laughs> what are you laughing at soraya Doug sent a screenshot of the chat and I just look so upset. <laughs> it was from like 15 minutes ago. I must have been from when someone, when Will was making the joke about Emmett. <laughs> no, it was, way, it, was, it was long before that. Oh no. Um, <laughs> I, agree, I agree with you, Emmett, though. I felt like a lot of, that was like, while I enjoyed the song breaks and like the, the passage of time that they were showing, I felt like it definitely like, some of the jumps were like, oh, this is like, six month worth of relationship emotional intensity occurring over like a you know a 60 second song break yeah. that like you're getting a like okay and like i you know after a couple of them like you kind of just you expect it and that you understand that like this is just what's going to happen i think when i watch movies like this i'm trying i'm like i'm suspending my criticism as much as possible because like this is also foreign to me anyway that like i'm just trying to approach it the first time just to like enjoy it and see what I can take of it that like at least I can connect with on like some sort of level mm. but yeah so there's obviously stuff that like you know giant leaps of passage of time and emotional intensity and all of that that like feel like a little like you know you could have just sliced off a little less of the relationship here and focused in a little more on like a smaller detail or a smaller amount of time instead of feeling the need to go so broad and in that two hours and 14 minutes thank you corbin we could have gotten like a little more like of an intimate slice of life but then that's like you know like american french korean cinema of that vein where like indian cinema i like that it's like spectacle and it's big and like even in this malayalam way that's like small trying to be like smaller more intimate film i like that still within that there's still like sure the spectacle of it is still that like hey even if we're gonna story tell in a way that's small and character and story driven we're still gonna try to do a big like a, a big about a big amount of time like a large amount of time within this small frame which i and, you know i think it's and, and, and another thing that you're going to want to learn about indian cinema and indians in general very emotional like, yeah in terms of how like how they like to show it uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah positive and negative uh wise and so like these big emotions that we hear would normally think are like oh you're going kind of over the top there it's just kind of normal uh and that that yeah. takes that that does take some getting used to uh that's this, one that's I one of the things that we we talked about a lot at the beginning of the channel so I um I agree with both of you and and uh with Doug and and um Emmett. Emmett. Not that I'm not agreeing with you, Corbin. You just you were saying facts, not opinion. I agree with <laughs> I agree with your facts. I agree that they're true. Um, but the the reason that I was kind of willing to let that go is because the framework uh uh that the relationship was set up in was kind of um like it made me feel like the fast development of relationship is something that's very common in India because she was like he was like can I kiss you on the neck and she was like we're not fucking married so like that felt to me like so this has to happen really fast and there's yeah. not there's not time for it to develop to develop in real life let alone in a film because of the you know cultural religious whatever whatever you want to call it um pressure that comes from that or not even pressure just right. tradition um yeah well while we're on the subject can i bring something up slash ask something so um obviously oh what you can do one you can bring up or ask Thank you. Bring up a question. So, hashtag Patreon. Obviously, a lot of the movie was spent um, focusing on. My dog just woke himself up. Sorry, uh, Bobby and Baby's <laughs> relationship, but um, I 
have so many questions and there's probably not answers but just about bonnie and the american tourist one could have used more bonnie screen time because that man was silent but boy was he attractive yeah and, <laughs> and he could moonwalk yeah Ooh, i was right. like okay need more of him on screen i did see some drip. In that movie that you watched recently corbin vikram i think is what it's called and oh, i i, I Okay, okay. Well, I don't know if you're I ready for know. Vikram, but it's... Vikram, yeah. I think a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people I know saw that one, so I might watch it, but... It's fun. Okay. So, mm. the relationship between Bonnie and this American tourist, one, I like, you know, I would like to see how these two people who have more than just a language barrier to overcome have find anything to discuss or talk about or get intimate about aside from physical stuff. And... Two, I would like to know, like, is Bonnie, um, like, you know, is, does he operate outside of the cultural norms or is he wired into the whole cultural norms of where he lives? And, do, you know, does he, like, is he cool? It seems like he's cool with spending the night with this American tourist at her homestay place, which is frowned upon by basically everybody else. And she's obviously cool with it, but, like, what transpired and like i'm just so curious as to like how all of this worked and if like I, like it ha she's putting like you a want lot to know of the stuff. horny details i mean obviously but no i mean i'm just <laughs> curious the like, at the end, like right? this woman this american tourist is putting so much trust into this man that she met in a foreign country who she doesn't really have any means of verbal or probably written communication with because i don't think she speaks the language and I, I don't think that, about that. Yeah, with I, I think I she does like, actually. This girl went to India like fucking looking for a store. <laughs> to she broke up. She was like with the same boyfriend since she was sixteen, and she was like, you know what? I'm gonna go find someone. I'm not even gonna say a word to him. I'm gonna fuck him. <laughs> also, I wondered this. Um, yeah. The uh, the youngest brother, I think, when she comes to stay at the house. Frankie. Uh, He's cheesing. She's he's like, oh, are you gonna get married? And um, she's like, N uh, no, uh, we're dating. And then he's like, what? And she's like, boyfriend and girlfriend. And I was like, is that for the Indian audience, like, to make that whole right. thing scandalous? Oh, because I was like, there's no chance in hell that this American woman that's like, literally just said two seconds ago, like, this is the place I'm gonna go next. There's no way that like she is actually like. We're boyfriend and girlfriend. This is my right. Well, maybe, well, maybe, but but maybe it's not for the people watching. Maybe it's for because she's like, even though he's probably a high schooler, she's like infantilizing him, and she's like, oh well, I need to like, oh, we're just boyfriend and girlfriend. That's why we can kiss. Yeah, you know I didn't know if it was I mean? that or if it was just more just child. like because like in I I took it as that, but I don't know. Indian That's what I said. That they don't want to be like. We're fucking. What I said or what she said? Yeah, no, no, what you said, Well, And then I guess just a question about that. So correct me if I'm wrong, but is it a bold choice that they chose a black woman to be the American tourist who is part of this relationship? I'm actually so glad they did because the one other white tourist that talked, he was... He was annoying. Yeah, was but awful. I'm wondering, like, is the, is <laughs> no, the no, casting was, choice, was, is, that, is that a big deal? No, no, not really, because a um, okay. uh, lot of... I mean, it, foreigners don't often get a lot of roles in India cinema yeah. outside of the angry British person. Um, right. And the, the fact that there's a, a, a black person, there's, I mean, there's Sri Lanka uh, often comes uh, to India. People from South Africa often yeah. come over. So it's not, it's not that huge of a deal. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I, I just was a wanna... much actor than any other foreign actor usually is in Indian cinema. That's good. Um, so that, which is good because that one other guy who talked to Baby about the picture, he messed yeah. up his one line in the goddamn film. Right. It's so infuriating what they do with white white <laughs> actors. Um, it's yeah, it's I just want to clarify that, like, I mainly ask that just because as a person who like comes from a different like 
cultural background like i'm you know i know that minorities and i mean not minorities but people across like people in other countries in the world are racist and mm -hmm. people i think people in america like to think that they're the most racist country but that's not necessarily true and like i can say with confidence that there's a lot of racism in iran because there was a slave trade there of people from africa and all of that kind mm -hmm. of stuff and there are a lot of black iranians now because of that but also you know in america and all of that kind of stuff so like i just don't want it to come off as me being like whoa like i want it to be like i know that there is racism in other parts of the world aside from america towards black people so i was just curious about like what the no. attitude was not like. really not that. really a, with like uh, black people it's more with other indians okay um of other castes um different skin tones yeah. Uh, yeah, Hollywood uh, has often had this thing called uh, fair and lovely cream, uh, right. which lightens yeah, skin lightening your, cream. Literally yeah, yeah. lightens your skin. Uh, Priyanka Chopra has endorsed that before. Like a lot of like big. Right. <laughs> they now re they now regret it and apologize, but they mm. often did uh, at yeah. the beginning of their careers. Or there's North Indians in places like Assam that look Chinese, but they're Indian, and so they often don't get. Uh, told that they are Indian because they don't look right. Indian as well, and so there's there's that stuff more than the um, other other race thing. Got it. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for clarifying. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. I'm sorry to I'm sorry to totally derail from the movie, but Douglas earlier mentioned something about this going up on YouTube, and it reminded me. <laughs> where is where is in in relation to my box on your screen right now? Where is <laughs> Corbin, where is Douglas? He's on the bottom. Below me? No. To here? No, he's, he's at that angle for me. He, he's in no, the middle so of the top one. There, like, there's seven boxes, right? And oh, so, so the guy at the very bottom of the screen, <laughs> for those of you watching, because I know that a lot of you in the comments thought that he was really hot, and you guys mentioned that a lot in the comments. If you want to follow him on Instagram, his Instagram is you can call me Douglas. Oh my God. <laughs> All one word with no um, underscore. <laughs> I love, I love. You guys, I just got a call I have to take. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> It's everybody, an Indian agent. It's an everybody, Indian model agent. Everybody, uh, send your uh, put your ats uh, here on the screen, <laughs> <laughs> so everybody can go follow you. There's actually a bunch of really talented people. Douglas down below is a, a wonderful actor and a hottie. Uh, TJ is a wonderful musician. Soraya is also a wonderful musician. Cassandra <laughs> down here is a wonderful actor. Uh, Emmett is hot. Uh, Emmett. <laughs> <laughs> and then Will and uh, no, 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 Emily, no, no. Uh, they make have, delicious have... bagels. Not yes. really. Actually, I, we I haven't tried them yet. That's what I'm good at, is writing. Writing oh, is right. what right. I'm good at. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <I can't remember. laughs> and uh, yeah, Emma, you're well, so hot, people forget that you are you have talent. Most people that, that are here, as hot as you just coast on their looks. That is your letterbox, Emmett. Emmett is my favorite letterbox that I account that I follow. Great reviews. Uh, okay, sure. My letterbox is Ziggy Star Dust Off, but it's Ziggy with one G. <laughs> That's a really yeah. I know I follow you, bro. It's really and TJ Black is not the person that you guys thought he was. A YouTuber? <laughs> the YouTube he is another oh. famous. That taken out of now. context is so ominous. TJ <laughs> is not what they seem. <laughs> I love that you guys have read I'm like, all. I don't know what that means, but. I love that you guys have read all the comments of the RRR review. <laughs> <laughs> I probably won't read the comments for this one, but I read all those for sure. <laughs> Um, I was I gonna say. So I know I really like the look of Bobby's friend, cool looking dude with the sunglasses. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I couldn't disagree more. <laughs> that guy scared, <laughs> that guy scared the shit out of me. Bobby's friend, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, also, I at one point I just just for a second I thought that the guy, Gilly, that, Gilly. um, Bobby's friend who i don't remember it was like person yeah Prasanth, i think was his name mm -hmm. um um he his fiance and then wife i thought was yeah. shami's wife oh for a second 
And so I was like, thought I was like watching a totally different movie than was intended because I was. I thought the same thing. Yeah. Oh wow! <laughs> Jeez. You thought it was like an adultery drama, like a like a yeah, fatal attraction. Like, this guy's fatal attraction. Murdered by Shami. Murdered by the stash. Anyways, there's there the they both actually have like um, Subin who played the the the, the main guy. Mm-hmm. Um, they Saji? Have, yeah, Saji. Um, has a film called Android 2.0 where they it takes place in a Malayalam village, but mm. they he hires a robot to help his old dad. Whoa! And so, so it's it's a really good film. He he's he's good in everything. Fafa, mm. which is what you call Fahat Fasil, if you don't want to say his full name, the guy who played Shami, mm. one of my favorite actors. I love him so much. Uh, he's he, I think he's one of the best actors living currently so who you saw there is not who he actually is Wait, <laughs> obviously uh shami the crazy one. Oh yeah he's uh, yeah. i want to see him in something in something completely actor, different Indian yes yes, yes, have won an yes, Oscar? I thought yes. So. he was my favorite part of the whole movie yeah he's he's absolutely incredible any film you see of his is amazing uh and he's always good in everything um and so he, I, I i hope to be able to talk to him one day but um i yeah, want to see him in something completely different from what he was in this movie. yeah me too yeah me too uh, i need rex corbin uh i will i will give you <laughs> see it's hard because a lot of malayalam films are deeply cultural uh and so you'll you might run into stuff but there's another one that i can't pronounce for the life of me but it's amazing um so uh <laughs> i i i, I, I can't the subtitles did help sometimes where yeah. it actually like gave us it said the subtitle and then it said like that's a a, a famous proverb like after it and i'm like oh yeah. thank you for letting me know that that was nice yeah yeah um also some yeah, of the we, we were talking about that on, before like, you came in thanks for not listening to you oh sorry <laughs> um i uh I have a, a noodle and Kill Bill volume two date with the gorgeous woman sitting next to me. So I might have to bow out early. Anyways, so thank you guys for, for watching. Uh, please go follow all these lovely people. You can see all of their names right here. Go follow them on Instagram. Go subscribe to their music and TikToks. And TJ's a TikTok oh, star. You can go follow him. Uh, <laughs> and support all of them. Thank you guys so much. <laughs>